Hi. There's a video I've been wanting to make for a while. Um, it's spring break here, so things are really quiet. Uh, and I was busy this morning fixing my daughter's light-up shoe. And uh, I'm putting off doing some travel reimbursements, so I thought I would uh, do this video. So first I want to talk about the program we're going to punch in. Uh, it's a very simple program. Uh, we're going to set a bit in the accumulator of the PDP-12, and then we're going to shift it, or as the instruction in uh, the PDP-12 instruction set, or the link instruction set is rotate, not shift. Uh, same idea. <clears throat> so um, just a couple instructions. First, we're going to set some data into the last register of the PDP-12. So the PDP-12 really has one accumulator, a general purpose accumulator anyway, um, but it uses the first 16 addresses in memory minus address zero to store data and we can refer to that in instructions. Um, and so that's why I call it a register. So the, the last register would be what we would call register 16, but in octal that's 17, right? Because it's uh, 1111, right? Uh, and so what I'm setting, here's the address, and what I'm setting into that address is just one bit, okay? Um, in, uh, in PDP parlance, deck parlance, we call this bit 11 with the least significant bit. Okay, so this is 1111 or 000 000 000 001, or just one. So this is our data. That was a lot of words, okay? So now our first instruction is going to be in the next location in memory, which is 0020, right? So these ones roll over to this one. And that one rolls over to two, so 0020 is the next instruction. And the instruction we're going to put in here is 0011, which clears the accumulator, our one um, register, our modern register, the link, which is an extra bit that is used for certain things, and the multiplier quotient, which is sort of a second register that's used for certain operations, but it's not the general purpose register. So we're going to clear those things. And technically, uh, we usually clear these things when we press the I.O. preset key on the PDP-12 when we, before we start a program, but I wanted to make this program sort of general purpose so we clear the AC. Okay, next instruction, <coughs> 0021, the instruction is 2017. And what we're going to do here is we're adding 17, that last register here, to the accumulator. So 2000 is the add instruction in the link, and it's a direct class instruction, and that means all the other bits here are going to specify what address contents we're adding to the AC, and in this case we're going to do 17, which is here, which is 1, so we're going to set the least significant bit to 1 in the accumulator. Okay. Um, next, what we're going to do in instruction 0022 is we're going to do the instruction um, 0240, or 024N is the rotate left instruction. So we're going to rotate the contents of the AC left. And the last um, argument here is going to specify how many positions we're going to rotate. It. And we're going to rotate it left one bit. So we're going to uh, put one in the accumulator, then each time we run this instruction, we're going to rotate it one position to the left. Okay, so power of two, right? We're going to rotate it through the 12-bit accumulator. And then our next and last instruction in address 0023 is 6022. And six is the unconditional jump instruction in link. Uh, and it is also direct and so we're going to uh, jump directly to instruction 22, which is here, which is our rotate. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do then is clear. We're going to add one to the cleared accumulator. We're going to rotate it left one bit, and we're just going to keep rotating it left one bit. So what you should expect to see is that one just sweeping left through the accumulator, because when you rotate it left from the most significant position, it's going to pop back around to the least significant position, like the world's most boring uh, Pac-Man board.
Okay, so that bit is just going to sweep to the left. All right, so now I'm here at the PDP-12, and we're going to power it up, and we're going to punch in that program that we just discussed. So the first thing we need to do is put that uh, one bit into uh, the register. So as we've talked about before, but just in case you haven't seen my other videos, the first thing we need to do is set the data address here in the left switches. So 1, 1, 1, 1, and again this is octal, so that's 0, 0, 1, 7. In each three bits uh, we refer to in, in octal. And what I want to set over here in the right switches, which is the data, is I'm going to set just the least significant bit. Okay? So now, to store that into memory, what I need to do is push the fill switch. Okay? And that's this switch right here. And so I'm going to push the fill switch. It's a little sticky these days, so I might have to hold it for a second or wiggle it. But uh, when that works, you're going to see that the, the memory buffer here is going to change to reflect the value that I stored, and the memory address is going to change to reflect 1777. So I'm going to push fill now. All right, so that worked. So 1, I'm sorry, 1, 1, 1, 1, or 1, 7, and 0, 0, 0, 1. So that worked. Okay, so that's our data for the program. So the next instruction goes into address 2, because if I increment this, it's 0, 0, 2, 0, okay? And uh, our first instruction, I have to look over here at the whiteboard, is 0, 0, 1, 1. And what that does, again, is it clears the accumulator, it clears the multiplier quotient, and it's going to clear this link bit. They're not on right now, um, but it's good practice, okay? So I'm going to fill that. Here's that sticky button. Okay. So now 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, all right? So next instruction, so now I change to the next address, so 0, 0, 2, 1, again, is uh, 2, 0, 1, 7, okay? So 2, 0, 1, 7. What this is saying is add, 2 is add in link, and we're going to add the data that's at address 1, 7, or 17, okay? So fill that. So now in instruction 21, I have 2017. Great. Okay, next instruction, instruction uh, 0022, I'm going to have 0, 2, 4, 1. Okay, 0, 2, 4, 1. And I'll fill that. Okay, 0, 2, uh, 0, 0, 2, 2, 0, 2, 4, 1. Um, and again, what that instruction is, is our rotate left instruction. So we're going to first set the 1 bit in the accumulator. And then when we run this instruction, it's going to pop over to the next left position in the accumulator. Okay, so that's filled in. And now our last instruction goes into 0, 0, 2, 3. And that's our jump instruction. Okay, and that's 6, 0, 0, I'm sorry, 6, 0, 2, 2. Okay, so that's going to jump back to our rotate instruction. So 6, 0, 2, 2, fill. All right, so now in instruction 0, 0, 2, 3, we have 6, 0, 2, 2. So again, it's saying jump back one instruction and do it again indefinitely. Okay, so that's our program. So um, let's run it. Okay, first things first. Um, I am going to change the computer into link mode because these are link instructions. So I'm going to use the link switch here. And then I push IO preset. Oh, I had the switch backwards. Eh. Okay, so now I, I push IO preset, and now it's in link mode instead of 8 mode. It turns on, when it turns on, it's in 8 mode. This is a link program, so we're going to uh, switch it to link mode. So now I'm going to set the uh, left switches back to the start address of our program, which is 2. We 
put the data in at 0017, but that's not an instruction. So we want to start the program at address 0020. And so now what I'm going to do is push the left switches. And again, I need to clean the console. The, the buttons are a little sticky. OK, so now it's running. And you can see it's doing stuff. Um, and you can see that some of these uh, lights look kind of half on. And that's because they're incandescent lights. And they're flickering so fast that they kind of glow, but not bright enough to really show, show full light. Okay? And you can see over here in the memory address range, we're firmly in that range of addresses that we coded, right? 002, you know, uh, 2 and uh, 3 are, are running in this tight loop. And so that's why this bit is kind of dim, and this bit is brighter, and this bit is bright. Okay? And the accumulator is kind of roughly uniformly dim. Okay? So our program is running, which you can see is running here, and we're fetching and executing. That's what the processor state uh, indicators here mean. But it's going so fast that we don't really get to see what it's doing. Okay? Now, I can show you how to slow this down using um, single stepping and the auto feature, and that's one thing I want to show you. But the other thing I want to talk about is how the PDP-12 makes noise. So when the first bit, or the most significant bit in the accumulator changes state, either lights up or turns off, it clicks the speaker, okay? And uh, right now, this is happening super fast. So that's just some noise here. Uh, I can't really hear, there. There's a little, yeah, okay, so I can kind of hear this thing running and it's just this really high-pitched sound. So why don't we do something so that we can hear this uh, at a human hearing range? What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on single stepping. So I just stopped the program machine, now I turned it back to run, IO preset. I turned on single step, and now when I run the left switches, it did our first instruction, uh, 0020, and now it's ready to do 0021. So when I press continue, we're gonna get the data from 0017, and now we're gonna put it into the accumulator. Now we're gonna rotate it in the next instruction, and now we're gonna jump back and rotate it, and jump and rotate and jump and rotate. And now you can see that bit jumping through the accumulator. Now, if I turn the speaker on, um, it's on. When this bit lit, lights, you should hear the speaker click. Okay, it's very quiet. And then when it goes dark, it's gonna make another noise, which is a little bit louder. Okay, so you probably heard that in the video. All right, so what if we wanna run this, uh, if we wanna kinda auto single step it? And we can do that using the auto key and push continue. So when I hold auto and push continue, it's gonna go through this, and the speed at which it is uh, automatically continued is through this auto restart delay. And I have a, a knob here that I can control the speed, the find speed, find control, and then there's sort of four gears, four gears, if you will, of how fast it'll auto restart. So let's put it in the lowest level and the lowest speed, and I'll do auto, Continue. So now it's automatically continuing, and you can see that bit marching through the accumulator. And you can see it click, uh, and you can see fetch, execute, fetch, execute. And, and you're, what you're seeing here is the computer actually computing and running. And this is one of the things I love the most about the PDP-12 uh, when I first saw it is you know, I, I grew up watching the uh, original series in reruns. I'm not old enough to see it originally. Um, and the blinky computers and stuff in the background, I always just thought that was just kind of for show. Um, and I, it was, right? But uh, I didn't realize that computers had lights like this that actually showed what the computer was doing in reality, right? So this is literally showing how the computer is functioning, okay? Um, but, of course, I can control this speed, 
So as I turn up the fine speed, you can see now that bit is moving faster. And even faster, okay? Faster, faster, okay? This is the top speed for auto of the lowest gear of level one, okay? And as we all know, uh, or if you didn't know, you will soon, um, sound waves, right, frequencies, pitches, are controlled by how fast the, the wave is happening, right? And so this is slow enough that it doesn't really sound like a, a pitch yet, okay? But it almost, it almost does. So if I switch to the next gear, now this is the lowest speed of gear two, and now if I speed it up, at some point, this is gonna sound like a note to you. And it's kind of a fun trick because it's like your brain will go from hearing this as a noise to hearing this as a, a pitch, as a tone. right about where it is for me. That kind of just sounds like clicking. That sounds like a note. And that definitely sounds like a note. Okay, now this is the top speed of the second gear. So let's move up. All right, bottom speed of the third gear. Now that definitely sounds like a note. And um, this kind of, uh, if you haven't already thought about it, you can say, oh, well, we could play music with the PDP-12. They can, and, and people wrote programs to do this. Uh, that's not what we're gonna do in this video, but by changing the knob, I can change the pitch that the PDP-12 is generating because essentially I'm changing the frequency with which that bit is getting toggled, okay? Now, technically, we don't have to march all the way through the accumulator. I could just set and unset this one bit, but it makes for a more interesting demo to see it moving. Now, that's the top pitch of the third gear. It's hard to listen to. Let's listen to the fourth, fourth speed. Lowest speed of the fourth. Now, I can still hear that. I don't know if it'll be audible in the video, um, but uh, that's the kind of top speed for this program. And if we were just tri uh, toggling this bit, in theory, that would be a higher frequency because there would be less delay for the uh, bit to rotate through the accumulator. you could hear that that was Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now we're slowing down, going back through those gears. Bottom of the second gear, top of the first gear. Things get real slow fast. All right, and now we're back to the bottom. So uh, this is hope, what I hope is a fun demo of uh, a very simple program that does something interesting and uh, does something interesting to listen to and also demonstrates uh, how the PDP-12 makes sound. 
and one of the things I always tell when I do a demo of this machine to people is you get used to what the PDP-12 is supposed to sound like when it does things that you are familiar with. And so when it doesn't make that correct noise, you think, oh, something that didn't load right or the machine's not working correctly, something's wrong because it didn't make the particular kind of staticky musical sound that it would normally make for that task, uh, which is pretty cool. We don't experience computers that way in the modern world. All right. Well, thanks very much. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, and if you have uh, any questions or comments, you can comment on the video or uh, find me on um, Mastodon. All right. Thanks.